Hey folks, I got a question from a friend recently who just got a 3D printer for their kid and they had a problem. They wanted to take an SVG file and make it 3D printable. The problem is they didn't have an SVG file, they didn't have the 3D printable file, so we need to go through the process of getting that there. The first thing that we have is we have the original image and we're going to take that and we're going to turn it into a vector. Now, we could trace it out with software, do a whole bunch of things. There's also a whole bunch of online tools that are free or very low cost that can do the same thing. I found one that gave us three for uh, free, so we're gonna try that. It's linked down below. And uh, we got this decent vector file out of it. What we're gonna do from there is clean it up to make sure there's no overlapping, all this stuff is set and ready to go. Uh, and then we're gonna bring it into a software to help us make it 3D. Let's go ahead and talk about it. All right, so step one of this is to take the image and we have this kind of Spartan kind of looking thing here uh, and we need to convert it over to a vector. So all I did was upload the file, it converted over to a vector and I download it. There's two of three trials I have left to get a total of three free, so I went with that. Almost all the other ones I found uh, either did a terrible job or were paid and I only needed to set three colors. I need the red, the black and the white. So we can actually identify that and get a little bit cleaner of a file as well. What I did with that was I brought it into Affinity Designer and I made it look like this. Now this one still has some issues that we need to clean up, uh, but I kind of want to walk through the process. The first thing I did was get rid of all of the red that it started with and I used the paintbrush tool or the paint can tool, should I say, the vector fill tool and painted the red in there. And that's where I got these three curves along the side, one for each eye and then one for the headdress kind of thing. Uh, if we take a look at this curves one over here on the right hand side, this also, I used the gray here to kind of separate those out. And then I'm just going to grab that and drag it down. I drag it down because the white is problematic for lots of reasons. We turn that off. You can see that we have the full thing there. All right. So I colored in the gray. Nothing big deal. Uh, and you can see I have four different curves or closed loops here uh, for one, two, three, and then the inside of that. I'm just going to drag those down as being a separate thing. So they're below that because this guy, if we turn it off, I don't want the white background. I want that totally separated out. And we need to just make sure we keep everything else in place there. Uh, so this is kind of what I'm looking for to get. Uh, and I'm just going to slightly move it down here just so it fits fully within there. Uh, you can see at the very top here, there is this slight little line right there. Uh, so I need to remove that. And once I remove that, I'm going to export this out. We'll talk about that in a second. So to remove it, all I'm going to do is go into the node tool and click on one of those lines. And from there, I'm just going to click on each of those dots and slowly remove them in order. It's nothing big deal and probably something I don't have to do, uh, but just for the simplicity of all this and cleaning it up fully, uh, that line is problematic for a little bit. So we're gonna just gonna remove those parts uh, and I can also highlight over a whole bunch instead of clicking on them individually, uh, which is way faster by the way. Uh, but we're gonna go through and get all of those cleaned up. And then once we have those cleaned up, we can actually do some stuff with this. But let's move around, just make sure we have it cleaned up. There's one out there, that's a problem. And then you can see it's a really infinitely thin little line there, but it will show up in our 3D print. It will show up in our model. So we need to get rid of it because it's going to appear as this little long line thing that's uh, definitely not supposed to be there. Uh, but if I go back to this now, it looks all right. It's a little flat up there, which I'm not thrilled with. I can, I'm going to play with it a little bit more here, uh, but we'll come back once I have everything dialed in and fixed. You can see like stuff like this is a hot mess and it's going to cause big problems. Uh, so we just need to slowly pull those in just a touch and we can put that like there. We're going to change it over to an arc uh, and then that should allow us to solve ah, that problem. Okay, now we should have it entirely cleared up. I have the gray, which will eventually be printed as white. Uh, there's four of those. I have three red curves and then I have the black outline as curves. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly group all these together. So I'm just going to hit control G for that. This is going to be my white. I'll group all the reds. This will be my red. And then this one, I don't have to group anything. I'm just going to call it white. And we have that there, which I'm very happy with. And I'm just going to slowly move those out of existence and onto their own area just so I can shut off that entire layer. And now I have to get this ready for export. I'm going to start off just going top to bottom. So we're going to do the white and I'm just hitting the little dot to turn these all off. I'll go to file, export. We'll do an SVG and then we'll set this one as logo white. Save it and we will overwrite it uh, just because I've done this, but I've done some adjustments on it. This is going to be our black one. So I'm going to go back here, export, 
it's SVG, export that, and then we're gonna go with black and we'll save that. And then finally turn that off and turn the red back on and then we're gonna export that one. All right, so I have those done. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to Tinkercad. And Tinkercad is a great tool for lots of things. This one is one it really excels at. So let's go take a look. All right, so we're in a Tinkercad here. We've opened up a new part and what we're gonna do, instead of trying to draw anything out, we're gonna import things. Uh, you can see this supports four different types of files, STLs, OBJs, and SVGs. Uh, so I'm gonna choose my file, I'll find it on my desktop, we're gonna get the black logo and import that. And then it's max size is 1000 right now, it's well over that. So I'm gonna change that to 500. I'm just gonna make sure that width is the same for everything uh, is my plan here. Uh, if I can do that, I think we'll be in really good shape, but it's gonna go through an import. It's gonna be enormous when it does so. There it is. And you can see it brought along some of that uh, black area that I had. So I'm gonna go back and fix that and then we'll be right back. After far too much work, I got that fixed. All I'm gonna do here is go in and change the color uh, so that it is black-ish, uh, just so we have all of that. We'll remove all colors so it's truly black. Uh, and that's just gonna stay there. We're not gonna adjust the size or anything else. I wanna bring in the other pieces so we can figure that out as well. Uh, so we're gonna go in here, the red will be next. So I'll open that up and change the artboard again to 500. Uh, it's not based off, the, the size that you're importing is not based off of the size of the actual object. It's based off the size of the artboard in your program with the SVG. Uh, so that's an important thing to know. Uh, but let's go ahead and get this one. I'm gonna make that a reddish color, fantastic. And then we're gonna get import here, choose another file, and we'll get the white one going. Uh, again, changing that width so it's always the same. Uh, and then we'll import that. And we should be in real good shape with that. This one's just gonna be preset and we're gonna put that as white. Okay, so if we take a look at the top view, um, that's pretty darn close to what we wanted to have there. Um, there's some weird aberrations here around the edges. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with those, but we'll see what happens when we get into printing uh, to see what kind of problems that causes. Uh, but at this point, we're gonna select everything and we're gonna group it. And the reason why I'm doing it, so I'm gonna go into one color, but when I resize it, I wanna make sure it resizes equally all the way across. You can hold shift to do this, but sometimes I, I found that it doesn't do it the way that I want it to. So I'm totally cool just bringing this down in size like that, repositioning it out here somewhere. So maybe we'll set it at like that, it's four inches, which will fit on an A1 Mini, no problem. And you can fit it on an A1 without any problems as well. And then we're just gonna go back up here to ungroup and all of our colors have returned. We have all of that set. <clears throat> now what we need to do is we're gonna need to export this. And that's a little bit of a process. It's not hard, but it's just, uh, we need to make sure we're aware of a couple things when we do that. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna slowly just remove these two objects. We'll export this one. So this is just gonna be the black one. So I'll open that up. I think that's right. It is uh, this one here. Yep. I'm just going to call that black. And then I can undo what I just did. We'll get rid of the black, get rid of the white, and then we'll export this one. We'll call that red. And then we'll undo that and delete the red and then we can export this one. And go up here, change that and this one's gonna be white. And then I'm gonna undo both those things and we should be in good shape. All right, so now we have everything exported. We're in our software here. So I'm gonna go to add our objects. I'm gonna select all three of them and open them up. And uh, these are as single files as multiple parts. We can hit yes. And you can see now that we have the objects clearly shown there. So our final step here is with our AMS. We need to make sure we have all the colors. Right now it's only detecting or has set up that I have one, but I know I have uh, an AMS light. So I have four colors and I can go ahead and change those colors. Uh, for instance, the first one, let's go ahead and make that a black color. Uh, our second one is going to be a white color. And then our third one in row three, I know for a fact is red-ish. Let's see if we can find out, there we go, red. Okay, now what we can do is go here, our white one, we can change that uh, to be white. Our red one, just double click on that, change it to red. And now we have this thing set up, ready to roll. 
uh, and it's perfectly set for what we need to do. When I go over to preview, I can take a look and see what it's going to do. This is going to be about a two hour print and uh, you can see it gives you all of the things going on. There still are a few little aberrations in there that I need to go clean up, uh, like these little areas of white that are bleeding in there. Uh, but what I could also do if I really wanted to is I can go in to click on one of these objects, click on the color tool, and I can paint the colors in there for where I see that there's colors uh, kind of causing problems. I can choose to have all that set. I'm not gonna worry about that right now, but this thing is pretty much ready to go. Uh, I'll make a few small adjustments and then I'll go through and get it printed and it is ready to roll. So that's very simply how we take something that is two dimensional uh, as a image, convert it over to an SVG file and then take that SVG file and make it into something that's 3D printable. Again, it helps to start off with just a plain old ST or SVG, excuse me. Again, it helps to start off with an SVG, but if that's not what you have an option for, there are ways around it. You're just gonna to have to have a program or some help to clean things up. If you're looking for programs that are free that do this, Inkscape is my go-to. It's a free vector editing software that allows you to do lots of things and it can help you clean up your STL files. But let me know what you think. I think this turned out pretty cool and I can't wait to get it printed or to send over these print files so my friend can print it for their kid. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.